Keep your heads up and your arms covered, family. Here's the verse of the day, and it's Deuteronomy 6, 5. And thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thine heart, and with all thy soul, and with all thy might. And you already know, that's the first and greatest commandment, and the second is like it. Love thy neighbor. Love everyone. And thank you for all the love. I know you love Christina. And I've seen many, many, many of your comments saying that you miss her voice. So I'll take you back to the last video we did together six months ago. And she was in pain and she pushed through it anyway. All glory to our Father in the name above every name, Jesus Christ. What's up, beautiful fam? We're going to start with the verse of the day for Wednesday, August 17th, 2022. And it's 2 Peter 3.10. But the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night, in the which the heavens shall pass away with a great noise, and the elements shall melt with fervent heat. The earth also and the works that are therein shall be burned up. Luke 21, 25. Jesus, Jesus Christ, Christ, the red words, the bread of life. And there shall be signs in the sun and in the moon and in the stars and upon the earth distress of nations with perplexity, the sea and the waves roaring. And praise God, she was able to do this video with me on August 17th. And then she escaped exactly two months later on October 17th. And you already know, through all of this, our Father gave her the strength to still be fruitful. And all glory to our Father, in the name above every name, Yeshua HaMashiach, also known as Jesus Christ. I'm still laboring by myself. Through all of this, the worst pain of my life, all for the glory of God. And it's a blessing and an honor and a privilege to be laboring in these last days. And I just ran out of money for the first time, and I don't know how long. It's been a while. Praise you, Father. And I was able to order 48 more backpacks, and they've already arrived. And I ordered more Bibles. And they should be arriving any day. And I'm just waiting on our Father to supply everything else by the riches and glory of Christ Jesus. And soon as he does, I'm going to put these packs together and head back to California. Christina's Grammy, our Grammy, had surgery on January 31st. And I was out there for three weeks. And her sister-in-law came and has been taking care of her. So I came back to see the kids in Las Vegas. And that's where I'm at right now. But Grammy's sister-in-law is going to be going back home. So I'm going to be headed back to make sure Grammy's okay. And my mom's up there too. So I'll be checking on her and doing whatever I can for her. While I'm laboring for Jesus Christ, God willing. And while I'm watching and showing you the signs right where Jesus Christ said they would be, in the sun and in the moon and in the stars. And we've never seen anything like this, what we're seeing right now. These conjunctions are gigantinormous. And I'm going to walk you through it right now. And praise our Father for you brothers and sisters emailing me these pictures. And I posted these ones last week. And what you're seeing is Venus, Jupiter, and the moon. And I was able to catch this picture of them myself. And here's another one from Northern California. And here's what it looked like last week in Stellarium. And as you can see, right above Venus, Jupiter, and the moon to the left is the asteroid Esther. And Cleopatra, both queens. And the wandering star that they call Venus, they call the bright and morning star, is headed for the asteroid Esther right now. And the whole world is seeing this, family. Everyone watching. And even people that aren't watching. Sunset Sky Show. Last night we saw a spectacular scene in the evening sky. The young moon was approaching Venus and Jupiter forming a bright triangle in the sunset sky. Even random people stopped and took pictures. And there will be signs in the sun and in the moon and in the stars. And this was four days ago on the East Coast. As you can see, they're completely lined up. It looks like a straight line pointing up. 
And I posted this one three days ago, and it says, Sunset Sky Show. Three-day mutual conjunction of Venus, Jupiter, and the Moon witnessed by sunset sky watchers around the world is over, it said. It said that it ended on February 23rd. But that article is inaccurate because it's still happening. And Venus and Jupiter are about to be on top of each other. And I'll show you that in Stellarium in just a minute. And as you can see, as the days go by, like I said, Venus and Jupiter are getting closer and closer by the day. And the strongest conjunction when they're on top of each other is two days away, one week before Purim. And it's been rainy and cloudy at night here. So again, praise God for you, family. This came in from a brother last night. And you can see how close Venus and Jupiter are together. And you can see the moon right above them. Well, it's about to get gigantinormous, family. And I'm about to show you right now. And we're all being tested and tried. But Jesus Christ is the author and finisher of our faith. So hold fast, family. So let me comfort you with the truth. Verse 2. For yourselves know perfectly that the day of the Lord so cometh as a thief in the night. What day? The day of the Lord comes like a thief in the night. Verse 4, But ye brethren are not in darkness that that day should overtake you as a thief. What day? The day of the Lord. So that day will not overtake us like a thief because we're expecting him and watching right where he said the signs would be in the sun, in the moon, and in the stars. And the heavens declare the glory of God. So let me take you to Stellarium and show you what he's doing. And I backed it up to 222, February 22nd. And as you go through the days, you can see the sun, Saturn, and Mercury. And Mercury is headed for Saturn. And when you get to today, you can see how close they are together. And this is happening in the constellation they call Aquarius, the water bearer. And as you go through the days... To March 2nd, you can see Mercury and Saturn are in conjunction on March 2nd. And at the very same time, this is the quadruple conjunction. You can see Venus and Jupiter in conjunction. And I'll back it up to the 22nd. And as you go through the days, you can see this is today. They're starting to go into conjunction but the strongest conjunction is on the same day that Mercury and Saturn go into conjunction on March 2nd. Right there, family. And it happens right before Venus enters the constellation they call Pisces on Purim. This is gigantinormous, family. On March 2nd, there will be a quadruple conjunction, Mercury and Saturn and Venus and Jupiter. As you can see right there. And immediately after this quadruple conjunction, as you head towards Purim, you can see Esther and Venus in what they call Pisces, the fish. Now I'll take you back to this picture that our brother caught last night with Venus and Jupiter and the moon. And when you zoom into the moon, you could see right above the moon was Mars. The moon and Mars was in conjunction last night. And right to the left, below the moon, you could see another star. Hopefully it shows up in the video. That is, I believe, the eye of the bull, Aldebaran. Now we'll go to yesterday, and as you can see, the moon was to the right of Mars, and as you go through the hours, you can see that the moon and Mars was just in conjunction, and the moon just passed Mars today. And now I'll take you back to the wandering star they call the planet Mercury, and as you go through the days headed towards Purim, you could see it go into conjunction with Saturn, as I showed you. And as you keep going through the days, you can see it headed for the sun. 
and the sun and Mercury go into conjunction on St. Patrick's Day, the 17th victory. So there's a bunch of conjunctions happening, family. But here's what's gigantinormous. We haven't had a conjunction enter a constellation at the same time since the total blood moon eclipse and the conjunction with Mercury and the sun on November 8th. But it's about to happen. And I'm about to show you right now. This is so gigantinormous. If we're still here and you go through the days and I'll switch to the sun. If we're still here as we approach Passover and Resurrection Day, you can see it right here. On Passover, the sun is going into conjunction with Jupiter, and they actually go into conjunction together into what they call the constellation Pisces, right on Resurrection Day, family. It's right there. This is beyond gigantinormous. Because our Father God, the one and only God, is a God of anniversaries. And he repeats himself. That's why Jesus was crucified on Passover. That's why the temple was destroyed on the same day twice. Our Father repeats himself because he knows we need him to, to catch on. Matthew chapter 27. The last resurrection was on Resurrection Day. Verse 52, and the graves were opened and many bodies of the saints which slept arose and came out of the graves after his resurrection and went into the holy city and appeared unto many. And that's what I'm waiting on is the resurrection to meet Christina in the air and to be with Jesus Christ forever. And the Jewish people that they call rabbis have been saying for years that the Messiah is coming on Purim. And they don't realize it, but they're talking about the Antichrist. They don't realize that the Messiah already came and their ancestors had him crucified. But we know the truth, the New Testament. And some of you brothers and sisters are already saying that Yeshua HaMashiach, Jesus Christ, is coming on Purim. And one of our sisters is saying that Jesus Christ told her that he's coming on Purim. So if he doesn't come next week, don't get discouraged, family. Here's why. Because the original Purim was on Passover. It's right here on the Torah calendar. And when it comes to the new moons, the Torah calendar is the most accurate. Nisan 14, Passover, day of redemption, the lamb of Elohim slain, Passover, original fast of Esther. Woo, praise you for your Holy Spirit, Father. So I hope you're right, family, and he comes next week. But if not, keep watching, keep shining bright. We see the day approaching. And regardless if he comes on Passover or not, it's still the greatest day ever in history. All glory to you, Father, and praise you, Father, for loving us enough to send your only begotten Son to die for our sin, that whosoever believes in him shall have everlasting life. And no one knows the day or hour but our Father. But if you're watching, when he comes like a thief, that day will not overtake you. And the signs are there, family, so expect him. No matter what, we are in the last days. And the resurrection and the rapture is about to happen. And I've been telling you all glory to our Father. On resurrection day, it will be 1290 days since the Noah's covenant with 70 nations, many. 1290 days since they recognized Islam as God in a Jewish temple. 1290 days since they sacrificed this lamb on the Mount of Olives. And the person that was supposed to do the sacrifice didn't show up, so they pulled someone from the crowd to do it, and his name just happened to be Malachi. These are facts. It's not a coincidence. It can be only God's odds that 1290 days since 
They renewed Noah's covenant with many 70 nations and recognized Islam and sacrificed the lamb lands on resurrection day families Nissan 17 let's go and regardless even if that wasn't the covenant in Daniel chapter 9 we're going home the signs are there he's showing us all of this because he's telling us he's coming to get us our father we don't know the day or hour but he does and he's about to send Jesus Christ to come and get us and shake the graves and wake up the dead. And even though we don't know the day of the rapture, we know it's approaching and we know we fly soon. And this post on Twitter just came out the day before yesterday, flying home from San Francisco to NYC. And we got a crazy view out the window. More like magnificent view, all glory to our Father. And I'll wrap it up with auroras in the USA. And this one on top happened in Washington. And these auroras are spreading across multiple states, family. Right here, Oregon, Minnesota, Michigan, Pennsylvania, Wisconsin, Idaho, Montana, New Jersey, and North Dakota. And it says as far south as Colorado. And all over the world, Denmark, Germany. And this one was in France. And this one was in New Zealand. And this one just happened in Ohio. And I'll finish today's video with something else that's extremely beyond gigantinormous. And it's the March equinox. And this can only be God's odds and him telling us that he's coming. When you scroll down, you can see right there. The March 2023 equinox will arrive on March 20 at 2125 UTC. That's 2125 universal time everywhere. Right before Passover and Resurrection Day, the equinox, the spring equinox, is happening exactly at 2125 UTC. If it hasn't hit you yet, I'm about to show you. This can only be God's odds. This is not a coincidence. Because when Jesus Christ comes, he said, There shall be signs in the sun and in the moon and in the stars and upon the earth distress of nations with perplexity, the sea and the waves roaring. Luke 21, 25. The same time as the equinox, fam. Keep your heads up. We're going home.